Let's talk about whiskey collecting. I mean, everybody's getting into it. It's what the cool kids are into. Seriously, it's hard to find somebody who likes whiskey who doesn't <laughs> fancy themselves as somewhat of a collector. I mean, it's just fun. It's sexy. I mean, look at that. I have six thoughts on how to collect whiskey. Well, seven. First, you drink it. It makes no sense at all to collect something you don't drink, so let's start there. First, just a word. Um, behind me, on my shelf, they're not all visible, but I have like 48 bottles. That's not that many. Um, it's not unusual to talk to people who collect whiskey who have 400, 700, 1200 bottles. That, that number still kind of floors me to an extent, like I think I would compromise the structural integrity of my basement, the foundation of my house, if I had 1200 bottles of whiskey. That said, whatever you're into. The first time I ever talked to somebody who collected whiskey, I was like, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been experimenting. Like, I, I think I've got like six bottles now. Like, how, many, how many bottles do you have? And he said, um, you know, it's been a while since I counted. Probably 400. I was like, what do you do for a living? So before we get into how many bottles is too many bottles, that's not really what we're talking about today. We'll just start with step number one, and that is learn about whiskey there's a lot you could collect like there are tons and tons and tons of of whiskey american whiskey in particular brands out there that you can uh, buy from not all of them are worth buying from like, especially if you look to collect whiskey like you want to have stuff that's meaningful or tasty ideally it'd be pretty dang tasty um, so you should probably learn what you're looking for before you go out and seek to become a whiskey collector and there are some great resources for it. Of course, there are the whiskey publications. And specifically, let me be clear. When I talk about whiskey, I mean American whiskey. Mostly bourbon, some rye. I think I have three international whiskeys on my shelf. Oban 18, which is as far as scotch goes. That's the, the bee's knees. And then Nika from the barrel, and then uh, Broich Laddick non peated classic laddie that my dad got me, which is quite good. Quite good. But mainly when I talk about collecting whiskey, I mean collecting bourbon, collecting American whiskey. So there are a lot of good resources to look at. Um, two in particular, in terms of print publication, I would go to would be Bourbon Plus, which is Fred Minnick's magazine, which we'll talk about Fred. Uh, but then Whiskey Advocate as well. Those are two really good print resources, but you're not gonna learn a ton about like, hey, what should I collect from there? You'll get some like uh, scotch valuations out of Whiskey Advocate, which is about as pretentious as it gets. Uh, but you'll at least start to learn a little bit about the industry and what distillers are notable, what you should look out for, what special releases are headed your way from those two. But then there's a lot of online stuff that is really thumbs up. And Bourbon Pursuit in particular is a podcast that you should definitely watch out for. Because at the start of every episode, they hit you with a, hey, here's what's going on in the bourbon world. Here's what's being released. And if it's notable, generally they, they talk about it. So podcasts, Bourbon Pursuit is really number one. If you're just wanting to kind of banter a little bit and you want to get to know um, you know, flavor profiles of bourbon, another fun one is Dad's Drinking Bourbon. I appreciate that. I've got two kids and one on the way. So Dad's Drinking Bourbon is definitely a fun way to supplement bourbon pursuit. More blog style, uh, Breaking Bourbon. Breaking Bourbon is a website that mainly does uh, bourbon slash American whiskey reviews. Uh, but then they also kind of track what whiskeys are hitting across the nation when, like what is getting released. So if you want to keep up on notable whiskeys that are getting released and which ones actually seem to taste good, Breaking Bourbon is also a great resource. Bottom line though is learn about it. Like there's nothing worse than like going out and buying a bourbon because it looks interesting. You get back, you, you know, you're, you're down in your den, you pop that bottle and you're like, oh my gosh, this is just 
absolutely awful. Um, and you could have avoided that. You probably dropped 80 bucks on your local distillery special release because you thought it might be special because they said it was special, but it's, 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 it's not good. If you're gonna spend money on special whiskey, make sure you know what's up. Step number two, taste the whiskey. I, like I said, I have 48 bottles. I know, do a quick scan here. Okay. <coughs> I know I'm gonna like all of them because I've had most of them before or had something from that distillery. So as I look at my whiskeys, though I haven't tried all of them, I've tried most of them. And I know that, you know, when it comes time for me to open that bottle, it's gonna be an awesome day. So don't just go out and buy a bunch of whiskeys unless you're just independently wealthy and you're using this as like a retirement investment. Go out and buy the whiskeys you're gonna like. Don't just go out and buy it because it's highly allocated and you know it's quote unquote rare. One of the whiskeys that I bought that I probably detested the most of all the bottles that I've had was a pretty rare, very, very rare whiskey actually. I should have swapped it. <laughs> I should have I should have traded it for something that I knew that I would like more. I, I could have probably gotten four Weller Antique 107s, um, which I love for that single bottle. Um, but alas, I, I did not. So how do you broaden your palate? Well, you can go to bars and overpay. You know, for if you're looking to taste semi-allocated whiskey, you're gonna drop like 20 bucks for a pour, which is a good way to go bankrupt pretty fast or at least get your spouse less than thrilled with you. So I recommend hosting tastings. This is an awesome, I've just loved this. It's an awesome way of getting to taste a whole buttload of different whiskeys. As I'll just say, hey squad, those are my friends who drink whiskey. We're gonna have a whiskey night and the theme is bottled and bond. The theme is over $50 a bottle. The theme is under $20 a bottle. The theme is American whiskey non-bourbon. The theme is rye. The theme is you, you pick it. And we've all gotten to try so many different whiskeys because everybody has to bring a bottle and they all have to bring a different bottle. So they have to tell me what they're going to bring. And if you call a bottle first, you're the only one who can bring that. And it's been, again, wonderful times, number one, but we've gotten to try a buttload of whiskeys. So um, definitely recommend you host the tasting, set it up, your friends will come and they'll love you for it. And you'll get to try a bunch of whiskeys. You'll know which ones you like. Step number three in becoming a whiskey collector, shop local. There's probably a liquor store down the road that might be able to get you some decent bottles. So maybe you should go talk to the owner and maybe when you need to buy your Oktoberfest, that Pinot Noir for that dinner, that rosé because your wife likes rosé, those uh, crispy boys because you're going golfing and you need to throw a couple back because you suck so bad. Yeah, you can buy all that alcohol from one shop and support that one shop. And if you build that relationship with that liquor store owner, hey, you might be able to get some pretty rad bottles. That's what I do. I just recently this year was able to pick up this guy, this Michter's 10 year rye, which I was so thrilled to get because when I need a bottle of wine, when I need White Claws, because I'm fairly basic and drink a decent amount of White Claws when it's hot outside, um, they kick me a Michter's 10 rye, so. Support your local shop. You have a pretty good shot of getting in there and getting a pretty rad whiskey. Don't be the guy who calls up all your local liquor stores with the question, hey, do you have Blanton's? I was looking for Blanton's. Yeah, you and everybody else, chode. Everybody wants Blanton's. Like you're not gonna get Blanton's by calling a bunch of places asking if they have it, even if they have it they're gonna tell you they don't have it because they're holding it for, well, me or somebody else who put in the time to build the relationship and spent a lot of money on non-whiskey items. So don't be that guy. It's not worth it. Not worth your time, not worth their time. Like liquor store owners have to field hundreds and hundreds, thousands even of calls of people looking for Blanton's every fall or Pappy. You have Pappy, nobody has Pappy, just FYI. I don't have Pappy, never, never seen, I've seen bottles behind glass cases during raffles and I've never had the chance to get it. So odds are pretty good you won't either. 
unless number four get lucky there are a lot of raffles that go around there are some liquor stores in your state likely that when they get allocated whiskey rare whiskey they put it up for raffle you can come in and you buy a bottle to enter the raffle or they'll just let you leave your name but then you're going to be there alongside five to ten thousand other people looking to get lucky and score a pappy 23 or George C. Stagg, William LaRue Weller, uh, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon. Odds are pretty good it's not going to be you, but on the rare occasion, it will be you. I mean, not if you're me. I've never won a raffle. But my friend got a George C. Stagg, and he got a Michter's 10 Bourbon. Um, so he's got a pretty good string of luck. Anyway, you might get lucky. And so it's worth a little bit of time, I think. It's fun sometimes to get up at four o'clock in the morning and go wait in line in the fall to talk bourbon with a bunch of guys on the off chance that you'll get to buy a rare bottle from a total wine or something. Uh, so it's worth it for the good times, but don't be depressed when you come away empty handed because that's what I've done like 20 times. I'm pretty sure the math is working against me at this point. The other way you can get lucky is sometimes you'll just show up in a random store and they'll put an amazing bottle on the shelf and you can pull it. I walked into a liquor store once and they had two Willett 80th anniversary bottled and bond releases on the shelf with no limit and I bought both of them. I traded both of them, but I was able to buy both of them for 40 bucks a piece. It was amazing. Uh, that was by far the luckiest I've ever been just pulling something off the shelf, but... It can happen. It's not likely. Number five, and this is universally applicable. If you're like, I think I want to be a whiskey collector. Well, I think you're going to spend too much money. It's that, yeah, that's the way it works. Is you spend too much money as a whiskey collector. A couple of reasons why. One, the prices of American whiskey, bourbon, rye, it's going through the roof because you're watching this video of some dude in his basement talking about whiskey. It's crazy. Like we all love bourbon and it's been a relatively recent uh, evolution advent, you know, for me the last five years, for the United States the last 10 years, maybe 20, but whiskey's just exploded really, I guess, since the year 2000, especially since the year 2010, especially since the year 2017. We all want bourbon. Um, so because of that, the prices are going up, which means you're going to have to spend more than you would have previously. For example, Weller 12. Um, this bottle, in years past, would have set you back 30 to $40 in the states where it was widely distributed. Uh, Ohio, Oklahoma, Kentucky. Um, now... If you find it, which you probably won't, but if you did, the retailers probably jacked the price so high up because it's so hard to find that you're going to spend $300 to $400 on this one bottle. There's a tiny chance that if you built that great relationship with that liquor store owner that he might give it to you at retail, which is now somewhere close to $80, bucks, I think, 60 to 80 But, I mean... Again, not likely. Your odds are so slim of that. So just expect that you're going to spend a decent amount of money if you want to have a nice collection of whiskey. And that's if you buy it at retail. Then there's the whole black market, secondary market shenanigans, uh, which people don't, they talk about, but then they don't talk about. So... There was a big old Facebook exchange for buying and selling and trading whiskey after you bought it at the liquor store. Technically, it's illegal. Not even technically. It's absolutely illegal. You know, if I was fortunate enough to get Weller 12 at, you know, 80 bucks, I could turn around and sell it for 220 and then go out and buy a bunch more whiskey. And that's what people did. And that's what people still kind of do sometimes in certain places. So you can collect whiskey, buy it from people who have uh, built those relationships with the liquor store owners or gotten lucky at a Total Wine raffle. But you're going to spend all kinds of money buying at secondary prices because in many, many cases it's, you know, three, four, five times what the initial retail price was. 
So if you want to become a whiskey collector and you don't have a buttload of money, I recommend you don't become a whiskey collector. And that's sort of my story. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is fun. Hunting, bourbon, whiskey, etc. And, and then I have two kids and I'm like, holy crap, you know, this is a lot of money. And what happens <laughs> if I lost my job or, you know, some crazy thing happened that I can't foretell because I'm not all knowing. And I've got all this money tied up in open bottles of whiskey. Like, yeah, I cannot justify a collection of 400 to 600 rare bottles of whiskey. That's a lot of money just sitting on my shelf. And for most people, it's a lot of money sitting on your shelf that you can't afford. That said, I think you can collect whiskey and have 30 to 40 bottles that you absolutely love if you're wise about how you procure them. So don't hear me wrong and, and not collect whiskey. Just don't go balls to the wall and put yourself in a financial uh, situation that you're not ready for. So the five steps so far. Learn about whiskey. Taste it. Shop local. Get lucky. Spend way too much money. You don't need all five of those. Probably three out of the five and, and you'll get some decent bottles for show. Uh, step six. And this is how we'll wrap up the, the video. If you're seeking to collect whiskey and do it in a wise fashion, I'd say split your collection into two tiers. One is you're collecting whiskey. This is the whiskey that I'm gonna hang on to. I'm not gonna open all my bottles. I'm gonna open them for special occasions. And so you'll have your special occasion tier for birth of a child, when your parents come to visit, your brother's wedding, you know, you name it, promotion, etc. Then you're gonna have your drinking whiskey. And I recommend splitting these into two tiers because it's very easy to drink all of your collecting whiskey because it's so good. Like there's a reason it's expensive. There's a reason it's rare generally. But if you drink all of it, what do you have to collect, right? Like what do you have to compare when you're doing that really high-end whiskey tasting night with the pals, with the, the, the posse? Um, nothing because you drank it all. So what I try and do is I've got my bottom shelf behind me, not including this. This is collecting whiskey. Um, and the bottom shelf is, hey, I can drink that at any time. No rules on that. And it's great stuff because I collect it too. It's my Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which is, you know, if I had to drink one whiskey until I was dead, that's what it would be. It's my Eagle Rares, a couple single barrels, a normal release. Henry McKenna right behind me. Four Roses barrel proof single barrels. Amazing whiskeys. Not super readily available, but fantastic. Worth collecting um, and also worth drinking because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find another one. And then elevated are the things I'm like, I'm not gonna find another one of those. And so if I'm gonna open one and I'm gonna drink it, it's gonna be a, 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 a happy day. And it'll be something that I really truly value. So that one I put a I put a put rules on. I open them, but I open them with people, and I drink them with people for special occasions. Like I'm never gonna have it again. Now this is truly the last point. Have fun, and that's what people would say. But it's really easy for me if I'm getting into a hobby to become obsessive. So the other day, I know at my local liquor store that I invest my time in, they had a Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. And I walked in, I saw it on the shelf, and I, I said, hey guys, you know, like, who's that for? Are you holding it? Can I have it? And they're like, you know, you know we, we're working on it, we don't know. And I said, well, let me know, you know, what the dealio is with it. And they text me later and said, sorry, it's not available. And it's really easy to be like, oh, I was that close, I could see it, you know, but... But they gave it to somebody else. Dang it. But you know what? That's the way it goes. It's just not worth freaking out about. Plus, that's 80 more dollars I would have spent that I now have to save, invest in my kid's college, which I don't really believe in college, so probably not going to put it there. But maybe I could invest it in helping them start their own business or something. So, like, whiskey is just not that important. So, if you're going to become a whiskey collector, just understand it's not that important. It's just whiskey. All right, that's it. Six and a half or seven, I lost count.
steps to becoming a whiskey collector. Next time we're gonna talk about what you're gonna do with your whiskey collection. Hey, I've got a whiskey collection now. I've got 48 bottles, what happens now? Maybe I've got 400 bottles. Well, everybody has an opinion on what you should do, so I'm gonna share mine. If you want, leave a comment, talk to me. If you're in Wisconsin, hit me up. We'll share a drink. Catch you next time.